It all started with a book, a number, and a prompt. Hi everyone, my name is Chantel and welcome back to my channel. As you have seen in the thumbnail and in the description, this video is a craft-off between Blend Co. and myself, Darkest Raven Designs. A few months ago, I asked Caleb if he was up for a craft challenge, and here we are. If you don't know who Caleb is, his channel name is Blend Co. and he mainly focuses on Dungeons & Dragons craft, and also uses mainly materials that can be found around the home. He also does unboxings and thrift store finds, so go check out his channel if you're interested in all these things. But without further ado, let's get into this challenge. For this project I'm gonna use Gorilla Wood Glue, PVA Craft Glue, lots of tissues, which is three ply, so you can just pull the layers apart and then you're left with one layer, which works perfectly fine for loads of projects. We also need lots of this corrugated cardboard, of which the project is mainly built out of. I'm starting off this project by measuring out the corrugated cardboard and cutting them down to two and a half by one inch pieces. I am then gluing them together with the wood glue in a tapered or, as you can see, a stair-like construction. I have a rough idea what I want to make in my head and I'm just going for it really. I have no idea how high I want this thing to be, but I do know that it's 1 12th scale. I'm using this jar just to make sure that the stairs are going up evenly. Of course, this is still cardboard and I need to strengthen it a little bit at the base. So I'm going to add these little columns of glued together cardboard just to give it more strength. And this is what the stairs look like when I'm done with them, putting them all together. I'm going to use this Pringle scan as a base and center for a landing that I want to add to this staircase. Here I am measuring out where I need to cut the Pringle scan. Now that I've cut it to size, I'm going to fill it up with aluminium foil just to give it more strength. And then I'm covering the foil with some painter's tape. Here I am measuring out the height of the Pringle scan, so I can measure out some cardboard that I can then roll onto the Pringle scan. Once I have the coil of cardboard as wide as I want it to be, I then tape it onto the staircase. And this is what it looks like. Then at the top of the coil on the sides, I am going to add some strips of paper and you will see why in a moment. I then cut out a wider strip that is going to hang over the smaller strip that I glued on the side before. To make the side look like it belongs in a fairy tale, I'm going to add arches to the side. After measuring them out, it's now time to cut all the arches out of the cardboard. And then this is what it looks like when all the arches are cut out. To give those beams a little bit more flair, I'm going to add these cocktail forks. This part of me filming this is a little bit out of frame, but you will see the result later. Now going back to the staircase, I've carved out all these bits out of the stairs, just to make them look a little bit more worn. And then I'm going to add a wall on the side. I'm going to cut that flush with the stairs, so it's only at the bottom of the staircase. So here you can see I've cut them to size, but I am not going to glue them on yet because I am first going to add a platform to the top of the landing. I cut a circle out of cardboard and I cut out the part where the stair is 
kind of joining the platform and adding that to the landing. And I'm adding a second circle on top just to give it a little bit more interest. Finally, finally, the lights I ordered have finally arrived. How many times did I say finally? Finally. I'm glad the day arrived. There is 10 in every set and I am going to add two sets to this diorama. I attached the battery packs to the bottom of the stairs and let the wire come out where I want the wire to start so I can wire it when everything is painted. Then going back to the part that I cut out before, I am going to cover the entire thing with a mixture of PVA glue, wood glue and water. Then I'm going to attach the napkins to this part and also to the stairs as well. This will give it texture and make it more strong. And just by using materials that you have lying around the house, except the glue, but most people do have PVA glue at home. It's such an easy thing to do. And like I just said, I am also doing this to the staircase and just making sure I'm getting into all the nooks and crannies that I cut out before just to make it look like it's real stone. Because I did not really know where I did go with the napkin, I decided to grab some tissue paper and just add that on top and not the tissue that I just used, but some tissue wrapping paper. This works just as well, if not better, and it gives a fantastic stone texture. And of course I'm doing the same with the part that I'm going to put on the side. Now let's move on to the part I was most looking forward to for this project, and that is sculpting. I have an arch here, which is going to be my fairy portal. And yes, I am going to use this fabric as well. Now, of course, for this part, we need clay, tools, more tools, some bacon bond, some floral wire, which I don't think I'm going to use, and aluminum foil or aluminium foil or tin foil, whatever you want to call it in your part of the world. I am going to cover the arch with the foil. And then after the foil, I cover the entire thing in painter's tape so the foil doesn't fall apart. With my clay extruder, I have extruded very small strips or snakes of clay and I am going to twist these together two by two. This will give me the idea of vines, which I'm then going to put onto the arch. With my pasta roller on the thicker setting, I rolled out a flat sheet of clay which I am going to attach to the arch. I should call it portal. It looks like an arch, but it's, it's basically a fairy portal. I'm going to use some bacon bond and putting it onto the clay and brushing it out with a brush just so it sticks to the arch. Now that we have a perfect canvas to work on, the polymer clay canvas in arch form, I am going to add some texture to it with this tool. I have no idea what this thing is called. After adding the fine texture with that tool I don't know the name of, I am going to add some wood grain texture with a dental exploring tool. And this is what it looks like after covering the entire surface with a wood grain texture. Now I started off by adding this thicker snake twirly bit of clay but I ended up not liking it and taking it off again because it looks too much like a rope like a sea kind of portal kind of thing which is something we don't want I suppose I could have gone with a sea like fairy portal but that's not what I went with so I moved on to these smaller snakes of clay and that worked out perfectly fine I am, however, using that thicker snake of clay here because I am adding that to the inside of the arch. And the reason for that is there is that this thicker side on the front and then at the back I'm adding a smaller snake of clay and in between those two I'm going to put the fabric so you don't have to put anything else on top. 
you just push the fabric inside those two snakes of clay after baking the clay of course into those two snakes of clay with glue now i moved on to the portal because the staircase was still drying but now it's dry i can apply some paint i'm starting off with this what is it dark slate gray kind of color for the base of the stairs and the landing platform as well because I want this to have the look of stone. After that is dry I am going to attach all the lights with a hot glue gun. As you can see I am attaching them underneath that little strip of cardboard and then over that cardboard will be the structure thing that I made with the arches and then the light will shine underneath. And then after taping down the other set of lights, I am doing the same thing by attaching them with a hot glue gun. Then after attaching all the lights with the glue gun, I am going back over with the tissue paper because I want to cover up all those cables and that's just not possible with just paint. Then I obviously made some mushrooms as you can see in the background but I got so caught up in this process because I just love working with polymer clay that I forgot to film how to make a mushroom. So you roll out this cone-like shape and then you add some texture to it with a... this is a silicon tool. Then you place it on whatever surface you want it on and blend it in with the same tool. From a little ball of clay you make another cone and then you flatten out the sides and you have a mushroom cap. You poke in a little hole at the bottom so it can fit on the stem of the mushroom. Put some details on the top of the mushroom cap Add some bacon bond and place the mushroom cap on top of the stem. Add a few frills to the side of the mushroom cap and there you have it, your very own handmade mushroom. Whilst the arch is baking in the oven I am moving on to painting on some highlights on the staircase and the landing platform. This is just white and a light gray paint, just acrylic paints, nothing special. And I'm brushing them on with a dry brush. And this is what it looks like after the dry brushing. I really, really like the texture that the tissue paper gives. I also made this little army of mushrooms so I can add them to the staircase and they are baked and ready to be painted. I'm painting the base of the arch a dark brown. Then I'm dry brushing various colors of green and a light brown over the surface. The base of the mushrooms I'm painting a dark grey. Same for all the little mushrooms that I'm going to place on the stairs. Then I'm dry brushing some light grey over the top of the mushroom base to bring out those textures. The kind of hanging mushrooms I'm painting a dark orange and then dry brushing over with a very light orange. And the caps of the other mushrooms I'm painting purple and a teal. And this is what they look like. The inner arch where I'm placing the fabric I'm painting a glittery black. Once everything is dry, I'm cutting out the fabric and then it's time to place the fabric in the arch. 
I am applying Fabri-Tac glue and placing the fabric in the arch by pressing tweezers onto the fabric and into the crevice. Here is the fairy door that has a portal kind of shine to it because of the fabric. And then it's time to place the fairy door or fairy portal onto the base. And of course decorating the rest of the stairs and the landing. Here I am applying wood glue and then on top of that I sprinkle used tea which looks like soil. And I do the same for the stairs. Adding the mushrooms to the landing platform. And then, of course, decorating it with some moss, various types of moss, some little pebbles, and I also found some little balls of foam that are orange colored, and I will be adding them to this project as well. Now let's see what the final result looks like. And with that, this challenge has come to an end. Please make sure to go check out Caleb's creation as well. I really hope you like this collaboration. At the end of the week, I'll be making a little something to go with this fairy portal. Can you guess what that might be? If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. Make sure to check out my socials and consider supporting me on Patreon. I now also have a second channel if you would like to see vlogs, unboxings and other art related videos that don't quite fit on my main channel. And if you're new here, welcome! Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!